know why that didn't go as well. Hi everyone. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. We might have some more folks trickle in, but that's okay. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about teaching uh, African and African American experiences with open resources. If you're having trouble seeing the screen, it's a little small, you might want to move forward. Feel free to, free to like move chairs too if you need um, uh, to sit up a little closer. Um, and so we just had a really great presentation from Dr. Coggins about uh, black experiences, black history as being American history, world history, human history. Um, and so what I want to do in this presentation today is talk about resources that um, are going to be publicly accessible, openly accessible to you as teachers um, that can help you in crafting um, or retooling, I guess, existing lessons that you have or developing new lessons uh, and also to help enhance your own understanding um, of some of these different topics and themes. Uh, so I'm Stephanie Birch. I'm the African American Studies Librarian at the University of Florida. Um, and uh, this presentation is with the support of Brittany Kester, who is our one of our education librarians, and Dan Rabusin, who is giving the presentation next door. So a lot of the, what we're talking about is going to overlap. Um, and the resources, I, what I'm going to show you later, we have developed a guide that um, has combined resources from both of our presentations. So don't feel like you're missing out. Um, I am also, well, I'm a, li a librarian, I'm also a parent, so do we have any Glen Springs teachers in the room? Westwood? Okay, no. All right, cool. I have a fifth grader, soon to be sixth grader, who goes to Glen Springs and will be going to um, Westwood next year. Um, and so we have contact information here if you want to follow up with us. Our information is also going to be on the guide that I'll show you in a, in a few minutes. Um, so, um, library resources. Uh, Dr. Coggins, Coggins had mentioned that everything is on the internet. And that is, I will say, the one thing that librarians hate to hear. Um, <laughs> mainly because Google indexes less than 20% of the internet. Um, so that means when you're doing a Google search, um, a very small fraction in reality is, is of the internet is what you're able to access. Through the libraries, we have... Um, uh, through the, the databases that we subscribe to that we have to pay a lot of money for, behind those paywalls um, or in the deep web as we call it, like uh, the, the School Board of Alachua County's databases and network, that all constitutes as being part of the internet as well. And so through the libraries, you have access to a whole world of information that you may not be able to find um, via a, an internet browser search. Um, and I like to talk about library resources as being kind of a trifecta. A lot of people think about books or databases as being library resources, but I also want to encourage you to think about people as being library resources. Uh, librarians, Dan, Brittany, and I are all resources that are available to you. Um, I can't see my notes on here, so sorry if it's a little rough today. Um, but as, as human resources, um, we are able to... Um, come do topical lectures. We can host field trips. I have done field trips um, I, about every year. I have a high school class um, from Gainesville High School, an English class that reads The Bluest Eye. And so they, um, the teacher brings her students to come look at um, materials pulled from our historic children's book collection um, to see the kinds of um, racial representations that the characters would have been exposed to during the Jim Crow period. And then we talk a little bit about those books in context um, so that the students are not just seeing very racist representations, but they understand the history behind those representations mm -hmm. and the real world implications, the impacts that those ideas um, have had on real people. Um, so we do um, library tours quite often. We also do research trips. Um, so especially if you are... Um, uh, maybe a junior or high school um, teacher. We have, uh, every year we have Fort Clark Middle School kids come, Howard Bishop students, high school kids who will come um, as part of a field trip to one of our classrooms where they can um, get a temporary login and they can do research using our databases um, for whatever research, uh, whether that's independent or a group project that they're working on. 
Um, so that is also something that is available to you. So we will, um, so we can do those kinds of uh, research workshops where we can also provide some library instruction on how to use um, a library database. Um, also, base, I, I personally do a lot of um, instruction around the research process. What I found is that when students get to the college level, they're not quite sure what that process looks like. And we definitely aren't teaching that in college. And so I kind of offer um, a little bit of a background on, on how you can actually begin to think about the uh, research as a process in order to develop um, your work. And then we also obviously have technology. So we have databases. Um, we also have different in-library technologies. Um, like high-speed scanners. Um, so our collections, and obviously information, so our print uh, collections, we have um, special collections that are non-circulating. So like mm -hmm. I mentioned, the um, historic children's literature collection. Those are things that can't be checked out by anyone, but you can bring a class in to see some of those materials. A lot of those materials are also digitized and available openly online, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, we also have circulating collections where uh, U.S. students, uh, faculty, staff can check out those materials. Even though you as a public teacher, public school teacher, cannot check those materials out, you can come into the library to use those. Uh, maybe there's a chapter in particular that you want to look at and you can create a scan of that um, mm -hmm. using one of our scanners. Um, so those are available. We also... Um, I'm also happy to work with um, the Alachua uh, County Public Libraries and the school's um, media specialists. Is that what your titles are? Okay. Um, on um, print, print volumes or recommendations for titles, um, if I don't know what your budgets look like um, for purchasing uh, materials, we currently do not have any kind of interlibrary loan system between the university and the public libraries. Um, that's actually something that Brittany, Kester, and I are interested in exploring so that some of our print collections would maybe become accessible in the future. Um, so thinking about library resources, think of it as a trifecta. Um, I want to have a question, or I have a question for everyone in the room. When you are thinking about, hopefully everyone who's here today has been already thinking about how to infuse African and African American experiences into their classroom, into their lessons. If, hopefully, if you are one of those people, where do you go to find information? PBS. Huh? PBS. Okay. I've went to conferences yeah. that specialize. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gail. Well, Gail. 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 Oh, Gail. Okay, yeah, Gail. Yeah. Library of Congress? Great. These are all excellent tools. Um, it's funny because when I ask students that question about where they get research information, uh, they say Google. And then we talk about uh, Google, which is, which is great. Um, those sounds like you have a lot of um, educational resources. You might learn about a few others today. Um, you might know about some already. So what Dan and I have created is a pretty extensive resource guide of open educational resources um, related to African and African American experiences that you that will be that is available for you to use now. Um, there is a link, I believe, in the program um, for you to access that. And we're going to look at it in a minute. So um, it includes library contact information, um, the presentations from today. So if you really want to go back and dig into Dr. Coggins presentation, it is there. You can go look at some of those resources and uh, information um, that he is talking about. Um, open access resources organized topically, which we'll, I'll show you in just a minute, um, as well as key resources um, for African and African American history online, as well as general education resources. Um, and then also, coming soon, a teacher gallery. So if you are creating materials, lesson plans, activities for your class, and you are interested, you can send those to us and we will put them on the LibGuide so that those are available for other teachers um, as well. Um, so again, the LibGuide is free to use. There is no login required. You just simply follow the link. 
I want to do um, highlight a couple different types of resources that are available. Um, primary sources is one. Um, if you can't see it all the way in the back, this is one of the um, resources linked to in the guide. It's Experiencing History, Holocaust Sources and Context from um, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum that has a sub-collection of primary materials on African Americans in the Second World War. And so these are a couple examples of a couple of those documents that are in there, which is a German leaflet, a propaganda leaflet for African American soldiers, and then W.E.D. Uh, du Bois wrote the Negro and the Warsaw Ghetto. And so there are, um, this collection is highlighting the kind of connection between African Americans in the Second World War, the contributions that they made, but also in how um, African Americans were um, not only experiencing the war, but thinking about the war um, from a lens of oppression in the United States and fighting fascism and fighting um, oppression that was happening in Europe. So we also have digital projects. Race and Class in Du Bois' Seventh Ward is actually a really kind of cool project. Um, and it has uh, oral histories. It has... Um, I think a different multimedia projects, and even you can create your own board game um, to learn about uh, Philadelphia in the 19th century, or 19, yeah, ni late 19th century. Um, and there's different characters that, um, that you play in the board game, and it really teaches about this kind of experience and place and time um, within uh, the Reconstruction era, well, early Jim Crow era. Um, and then last, lastly, um, one other example I want to provide is lesson plans. So this is a lesson plan. Shout out to Deidre Hatchen that I think is in the back somewhere. Maybe not. Um, Black Educators, uh, Florida Secret Social Justice Advocates, 1920 to 1960. This is a uh, lesson. These are lesson plans that correspond with um, an exhibit that was recently curated. If you go to the reception across the street at the Aquin Jones Museum, a part of this exhibit is still up. Um, the exhibit was in three locations, so there's also, um, I believe, a permanent display at the, uh, the law library at the university on the integration of UF. Um, and then there was a temporary um, exhibit at the, li at the UF libraries. Um, that part of the exhibit is now online, um, and so you can still see the... Um, information from that exhibit, as well as use uh, the, the lesson, to, lesson plan to try to, to teach that exhibition within your class. Um, okay, so, let, oh, that didn't show up very well. Look at the guide. Why don't I see this really quick? I just want to see what yeah. time we're done. Okay. So this is what it looks like. When you first log in, there's our contact information. Um, the first tab is conference materials. So far we just have two, but we'll be adding the others um, after the fact. Resources by topic. So th this is also by no means an exhaustive list of the kinds of resources that are available openly online. Uh, but this can, is really intended to give you a sense of the breadth, the world of information that exists online that you have access to, um, digital projects, collections, um, web pages and blogs that are all related, uh, multimedia resources that you can use to either, whether that is um, building your own knowledge around these topics, um, your students could also log in to use this um, if, if uh, for maybe junior high, even like upper uh, elementary school classes, high school classes. Um, you can, again, as I mentioned, use this to retool um, existing lesson plans or develop new curriculum. So um, here are, you can also, these um, images are all linked. So like, let's find a good one. So when you actually get into a topic page, subpage, um, they're organized now by uh, material type. So the first section here is digital history projects, collections online, 
lesson plans on classroom resources, web pages, and blogs. Um, sorry? I said very good. Oh, awesome. uh, and so there's some that are a little more extensive than others. Again, this is not meant to be exhaustive. If you have anything that you want to recommend to be added, please send me an email and I will do that. Um, or if there's a whole other subtopic that is kind of not listed here. So we have Africa from antiquity to colonial. I'll go back to here. I don't know if folks can see it in the back. Africa from antiquity to colonialism, colonial and independent America, slavery and the slave trade, reconstruction, resistance and anti-slavery, military and wartime experience, westward expansion, Harlem Renaissance, Jim Crow, Great Depression, civil rights, contemporary issues, black history in Florida, sports, STEM, genealogy, arts and photography, and literature and media. And there's also a lot of overlap between these areas, and so where possible, um, we have cross-listed a lot of these resources. So, for example, within um, the Harlem Renaissance section, you might also find similar, um, or the same resources within the Jim Crow era. Gotcha. Um, I think I saw a hand back here. This is a, it is through the University of Florida library system, but this is public. So it is in the program, I believe. Oh, it doesn't work? Let me see. Oh, this is the link that was sent in that email that we received confirming the conference, right? Oh, yeah. So, no, we changed the, we changed the um, link extension. So I'll come back to that at the end to make sure you all have that written down. Yeah? It, it, this is the link that we were sent in the email to confirm the conference? Yeah. No. Yeah, no. because I actually have been to the site already going through that link. Mm -hmm. Does that change? Okay. Um, I don't know. It might have been updated. So if you work for Lachie County, it was sent out okay. the email. Otherwise, um, you change the one that's on the flyer, and there's a different yep. end to it. So it's guides.uflib. Guides.uflib.ufl.edu forward slash AFAM -A -F -A -M underscore K dash 12. A-F-A-M underscore K-12. And I'll put the, the, the big screen with the screen, the PowerPoint uh, slide with the big hyperlink on it at the end um, in case you need it. Um, so, sorry, where was I? And so, I guess let's go in to, let's go into this one. Um, There are a lot of really interesting digital humanities projects that exist. Um, let's, let's see. Um, for example, this one, uh, Explore the Dispersal of Enslaved Africans Across the Atlantic. Um, it's a digi digital memorial that features, um, so obviously here's an introduction from um, Henry Louis Gates. But this is also a database. Oh, that's kind of coming up weird. Um, but you can, uh, it has 36,000 individual slaving expeditions um, and records of the voyages have been found in archives. So this is kind of a project that mm. was, has a lot of different partners. Um, Emory, um, UC Santa Cruz, UC Irvine, the National Endowment for the Humanities, Arts and Humanities Research Council, Humanity Center for African and African American Research. So the, a lot of these digital, these projects exist now um, where there are a, a significant number of really um, great institutions that have strong collections, strong scholarship coming out about African and African American uh, research, studies research. And what these projects are doing is it's making those collections available in different ways, different interpretations. Um, a lot of those collections and these projects do a come accompanied with um, teacher resources. And so um, if you find a really great digital project, make sure you're kind of exploring the website 
um, to see if there's anything, any pre-made materials that you can use or that you might want to adapt for your class. A lot of the lesson plans that I have found are really kind of targeted to um, upper level elementary through high school. And so then that kind of, there's kind of obviously a gap, which is the K through maybe through third or fourth grade. And um, if that, if you are a teacher for those grades, or a media specialist that serves great, uh, those um, level classes, the kind of challenge then, that uh, the unique challenge that I think you guys have is taking a lot of this high level, um, very complex information and turning those into lessons for those that are appropriate for those grade levels and that will meet their kind of learning objectives or requirements. Um, and I would also like to encourage you to then look at the existing kind of teacher resources and lesson plans. I don't know, I'm not a teacher, I don't know if it's possible to adapt those. Um, question in the back? really I will definitely connect with you afterwards um, to make sure I have the information I need to add that but that really this really this guide really is doing just that it's kind of intended to serve as a clearinghouse where it is a portal to this information universe or parts of it um, to help facilitate the work that you're trying to do because I understand Dan we all understand that the immense pressure and time constraints that teachers have and so this is the, one of the ways that we can support you. Um, going back to, um, I guess this is really for anyone, not just K through, um, K through third or fourth grade, but um, if you also want kind of some personal or individualized assistance, um, you can reach out to all three of the librarians that I listed on the first page. Again, our information's on the first page of the LibGuide. Um, for kind of some specific tailored assistance in finding resources and information that you um, want to highlight within your class. Um, let me make sure I wrote all of that down. Okay, so this is just an example of one project, but there's a lot of very, really great, fantastic projects that are out there. Um, so key resources, um, all these are resources, again, specifically um, for African and African American history and experiences. Um, we have the National Education Association, National Archives, National Museum of African Art Teacher Resources, um, PBS, uh, Scholastic. A lot of these re, um, edu open education resources that I heard some folks mention earlier um, that you already use. They have specific sections um, for black history and black experiences. Um, I was going to mention something else. And then we have general. So these are just, oh, sorry, I remember what I was going to say. So with key resources, um, these are, these cover a lot of different topics. And that's why um, I couldn't include everything in a subtopic. Um, to list is to limit, and um, it's really, again, it's not exhaustive. So these are places where you can come and get, um, you, there's a, a bunch of different topics that we have that were not covered um, or that provide information on ex, um, already covered topics um, that you can explore. If you need help searching or navigating things, again, please contact us. Uh, and then general education resources, um, different databases, collections, digital projects, um, mostly collections, um, that 
contain um, multiple different subjects and topics, but do also contain information relevant to African, Amer African and African American history and experiences. Um, Google Books is actually pretty good. It's getting a lot better. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can find in there, like the NAACP's Crisis Magazine is pretty much fully digitized and um, openly accessible now via Google Books, um, except for, I guess, issues that are maybe lost that, um, that even the NAACP does not have. Um, Internet Archive is really great for um, projects or websites that no longer exist. Um, that are archived. Uh, so as you will probably see, if this becomes a resource that you use a lot, this guide, um, it will change because every once in a while I'll have to go back in and test the links and mm -hmm. things might not work or, um, or, you know, different things are no longer supported because there are some pretty um, older resources, a couple of them that are listed in here that, you know, if someone... I wouldn't be surprised if they disappear. The links doesn't work, doesn't work anymore. Um, but those may be archived in the, in the Internet Archive. Um, Project Gutenberg is another really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone's heard of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're familiar. Um, Smithsonian Digital Library. So with these collections, there's a lot of, like, um, oh, also, if you don't know about this one, the USDC Teacher Resources Collection. Well, there's, this is from the University of Florida, um, College of Education. There are, it's yeah. <laughs> it might not work. But anyways, it has a lot of um, lesson plans about various topics. So even um, irrelated to what we're talking about at today's conference, this may also, these resources may be things that you want to use in other avenues. Um, and then, Lastly, so again, if you have created materials um, or you do create materials in the future uh, and you would like for us to showcase them um, on this guide, please send them to me. Um, I will ask that you, you add a Creative Commons license to your work, which you can do super easily if you haven't done it before with this link right here. Mm -hmm. Question? Yes. Um, are there any sites for local history? Yes. Um, local history as in Gainesville? Gainesville. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we have the Aquin Jones Digital Collection, the libraries, um, that does have obviously a lot of information, materials related to Gainesville specifically. Um, we also have um, the Joel Buchanan African American Oral History Archive, um, which Joel Buchanan is, was a member of the community, and he also worked for the university libraries. And so this collection is with the um, Samuel Proctor Oral History Program, and a lot of the folks interviewed there are there's like we have, there's a massive sub collection on Alachua County oral histories. Um, that collection, SPOP in general, does not have. Um, very many, any perhaps teacher resources for their collections yet, but that is a project I'm personally working on. <laughs> so those are going to be in development um, and hopefully will become available down the line. Um, let's see. Under key, key resources, oh, I thought I had it. Oh, the Alachua County Library Heritage Collection is another one. Um, so in terms of, I guess, lesson plans, the one that really immediately comes to mind, or classroom resources, is the uh, lib guide that Deidre Hatchin made for the corresponding exhibit. Um, there may be others, but a lot of the collections, the primary material collections, are what's coming to mind um, right now. It doesn't mean to say they're not out there. We just might need to look for those specifically. So I've got, let's see, I think another 15 minutes. If anyone is interested in logging in on the computers and exploring, um, we can do that.
or I can also pull stuff up on, on the guide if you want to um, see things specifically or look at different topics. So would it be safe to say that if you, I'm a lead teacher, so I can say to my, stu my other teachers, that these are vetted resources that are um, have been vetted to the best of anybody's particular, you know, because mm -hmm. nothing is 100%. Mm -hmm. But would you yes. would you be safe? Would that be a safe yeah. statement? Yes. Okay. Um, I actually am thinking also about putting up some, if it would be useful, uh, some information on how to determine if something is a credible source. Um, we actually have those. We do that with a lot of our students who, again, rely on, like, Google Scholar and, well, how can you tell um, uh, if this is a credible website? Uh, yes. So we can do that. I, I, I can totally make a note of that, okay. add that. I think um, that would be powerful because that's one of the things now that we are emphasizing yes. with the vast amount of knowledge and information what is a credible and reliable source mm -hmm. of information? Yeah. And so what we do as librarians <coughs> in creating a guide of this nature is that we do source evaluation. Um, in the, uh, let's say, week, <laughs> week and a half <laughs> that we have done this, um, it, is, it is really often, like, it's not an in-depth evaluation. It is really kind of glancing at... Um, who is, who is putting the, out this project or this website? Um, what are the sources that they are citing? Um, or how are they um, arriving at this information or creating these, who's involved in creating these materials? Um, and so yes, there is a, a, a preliminary evaluation process that has happened here. Um, like I tell any of the, the folks, the researchers or students that I work with is that at the end of the day, it's really up to you mm -hmm. as in this situation, you guys are kind of a researcher um, uh, to make your own determinations mm -hmm. and also to choose what you want to use. Um, with this kind of guide, it's very challenging because we have so many different stakeholders, right. um, K through 12, different counties, um, different subject areas that are being taught. And so um, from uh, the perspective of Dan and I, this, was, this is something to really kind of get you started. Um, so again, if you're needing help evaluating a source or finding other inf uh, sources of information and resources, please uh, reach out to us. Other questions? Or do folks want to log in? Yep. to highlight this resource, which is the Black Inventor Museum Online. So this is a great kind of thing where let's say you wanted to assign an assignment where a student has to research, choose and research a black inventor. This is a resource that they could come to to, uh, to learn about um, or maybe select a person that they want to research and begin to, to identify information about them. Um, another thing I'd like to highlight since we're talking about STEM it's also the kind of the, the darker side of the contributions that African Americans and, and black people have made to science, like the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, mm -hmm. um, or the Gila, uh, mm -hmm. which is the Henrietta Lacks, so the uh, in cancer treatment development uh, and research. Um, so 
there's all, um, we also have um, contributions to aviations, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Um, so this is, so come check this out. Um, and again, a lot of this is, um, re these resources can be complementary to the information that Dr. Coggins has provided um, and is suggesting as the kind of path forward in your schools. Okay, we've got 10 minutes. If you want to log in, you can also pull it up on your phone. It doesn't work quite as well on the mobile device, um, but I'll, I'll pull up the link again. Gosh. You know how technology is sometimes. I just want to make it like white so you can mm, see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. Got it. Excellent. Underneath? Well, just kidding. Oh, the. I don't know. Do you know what the is or no? I know. Great information, thank you.